welcome to our show this particular evening and um, i'm your host sanguti uh, obviously very excited uh, for you joining us um, and uh, we are going to talk about uh, climate change and pretty much anything around that particular subject but before we get down into that uh, this is a new segment um, climate conscious conversations and uh, this is our first episode so obviously we are breaking ground okay so i have this gentleman here and this lady here and i want to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves tell us who they are and where they come from and then we will get down to the business of the day okay but uh thank you so much for uh, supporting the fireplace and our content so of course if you are new on our youtube channel just subscribe uh, and of course keep in touch with us we continuing to serve you very relevant uh, content and that would be great you can also follow us on other social media platforms that would be amazing okay right karibu sana mr olala introduce yourself Come okay. on, thank you very much. Um, I'm called David Olala. I am an environmentalist uh, by profession. Um, I do quite a lot of things. I'm a director at the Community Lands for Change, a consultant at Ecofit Consultancy Limited, and um, a technical trainer at uh, Kitale National Polytechnic, uh, teaching environment courses. Thank you very much. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are the right person for this conversation. <laughs> right. I don't have that many titles. <laughs> you kept on like adding stuff for the others. I'm like, where is it going to stop? <laughs> okay. um, I am Isabel. I'm an anthropologist student and I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I came here in at the end of January, I think, mm -hmm. to study human nature relationships uh, in conservation strategies so that's is how I came to meet Mr. Malala so uh, yeah I am specializing to become a climate anthropologist so that's why I've been invited to join this conversation and uh, I'm happy it's my first time let's do this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right Asante Sana you are both welcome to the show uh, we are delighted to have you and um, obviously we're gonna have a good time uh, as we uh, try and uncover and discover and break down this animal called uh, climate change. So basically just to give you um, a background, um, people have struggled to really understand what climate change means because people use it almost every time, everywhere, but people, I don't know whether they understand really what climate change is and these conversations, the climate conscious conversations are meant to break it down to the very last person in the village to have an understanding of what climate change is and what they need to do to make a difference okay so everything else will be rotating around that mm. so um maybe to just to start off um <clears throat> how how would you define climate change in your own understanding should i start with the uh, uh, the, the gentleman experts. with big titles or, or <laughs> with, the first, <laughs> with the student and then i will add if he <laughs> you will add out. okay so uh, what is your understanding uh, of climate change in the simplest terms in the simplest terms yeah in the simplest terms uh, in the simplest terms okay climate change uh in soil it's called tabia okay it means the behavior of the the country in direct translation but how the, the land or the climate, I mean the weather, mm. is changing over time. So we call it the in Swahili. Mm. Mm. But uh, basically, um, climate change is um, a term that is used to refer to the changing weather pattern. Let me bring it down further to mm. a common person to understand. Mm. For those who have lived a bit, maybe more than 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, mm. <laughs> for sure you can say, that um, we were somewhere there are things which used to happen mm. some years back mm. but when you look at them today they are changing we no longer have some things and mm -hmm. some new things have come in place mm -hmm. um the way it used to rain mm. you know the most key indicators in terms of climate we can talk about rainfall mm -hmm. we can talk about uh, humidity mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, 
uh, uh, winds. Let's talk about drought, drought mm. and floods. When you look at this, this kind of stuff, we call of them indicators to climate. To, to the climate. Mm -hmm. So climate is a product of what we call weather. Mm -hmm. Weather is uh, what um, the daily conditions of uh, the environment, like what I've just talked about, mm -hmm. the indicators. Mm -hmm. How so we look at those indicators, how they look like mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That's weather. And if we look into these things for many years, around 35 years, 30 mm. years and above, 35 mm. years, mm. we can conclude that during this month it rains, during this month it um, it's normally dry, mm. during this month we can say it floods. Mm -hmm. If you go to other places, we can say that during this month it snows. Mm. It's because of those small summing up of the daily weather patterns of a place. Okay. Then we can come up with a conclusion, say, it forms what we call climate. Okay. So the change, climate, the, the change part of the climate, <coughs> is whereby you find that um, what used to be there before, mm. uh, let, let's say you take 30 years ago mm. or 50 years ago. So if you come, we count the first 30 years out of the 50 years. Mm. This is the way the weather used to be. Mm -hmm. The normal. We can yeah. Call it so, that. so when they summed up mm -hmm. the daily, daily, daily weather pattern. Mm and they give it a name climate mm -hmm. within 30 years mm. what used to be there those years now when you come from now 30 <coughs> years from 50 years we're going to 20 years mm. if you sum up the first 30 years and the 20 years which are coming up before 50 you find that the first 30 years were different from the second 20 years and the weather is still changing. developing is mm. changing into something different okay so that's how we call climate change okay if there are changes that take place in the place over many, many, many years. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I, in, in short terms, mm. I'm trying to find it's like a deviation that. from the normal yes. weather pattern. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I have something to ask. Yes, please. Can I? It isn't clear. Because uh, that's indeed, I, I would also say for sure the definition, but I would like to say something about the uses of the term. Because it's man made. We only started talking about climate change when we saw a necessity of to address something is happening that we don't like. Mm -hmm. So I think with like uh, the goal of this talk as well, is also a little bit of awareness, right? Mm -hmm. of climate change, yeah. Because it has a negative tone. You know, we have a joke where we come from because my country was 30 years ago, way colder. We had like harsh winters. Uh, we could ice skate all winter round, like, but now we have cooler winters and hotter summers. But people make jokes like, it's nice that we have some extra warmth and we can enjoy longer <laughs> to sit on the beach. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I would like explain climate change, it's an unwanting change of seasons and weather patterns. Like, I think the negative or like the negative outcome of this term needs to be more emphasized mm -hmm. because as I've learned as a student climate change is an issue it's a complex issue it's mm -hmm. not like a phenomenon it is a phenomenon but it is an issue it's a problem it's, it's a problem okay um, and sometimes I think that <coughs> if you want to explain climate change to people who've never heard about it or don't know what the, the effects and the impacts is on your livelihood or your mm -hmm your region, then you should emphasize the... You need to dress it in in um, in that kind of way so they yeah. see the problem part yeah. of it. Shouldn't just be yeah. like any other conversation. Mm. Okay. <coughs> Great. Yeah, so. So, so we are talking about climate change, not just as a subject to study in school, but because there is something wrong happening. Mm. Okay. Yes, <laughs> is that um, the point? Yes. That's yeah? the point. I want to bring it to home, bring okay. it home, eh? okay. yeah, because uh, we are just trying to introduce mm. uh, this topic of climate change. Mm. I grew up uh, in Tanzania here, mm. and I've seen houses of Zambia since we were young. Yeah. Now, when we were young, the boys... Uh, You're still in that uh, 50 years age yes, bracket? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh. Do I look like... Oh, <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> So, of course, we used to go to school when mm -hmm. we were very young. Yeah. Uh, that's way back in the, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, when we could go to school, I mean, in January, we used to open school, of course. Mm. But before you go to school, 
we used to plow and we make sure we plant maize mm -hmm. before the schools open. Mm -hmm. So we go to schools and uh, we study like for three months. In April, when you come home, we used to know, all of, all of us used to know, mm -hmm. we are coming to eat maize. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, in December is when we used to harvest maize. So we harvest maize, it's plowed, mm -hmm. we plant afresh. But today, those are like around 30 years ago, or something years ago. Mm. Today, the same same piece of land or the same same area, you cannot plant in January. Everything will dry up. You'll have to plow the second time to plant. So today, people are plowing. Right now, this is uh, March, March. to April. Yeah. Is when you plow. We are plowing. <coughs> In readiness for the planting yes, season. In, in readiness for the planting season. Mm -hmm. So we expect to plant in April. Yeah. And we, we harvest nowadays by September by getting maize of the farm. Mm -hmm. So you can see how the climate has changed. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to make sense mm -hmm. on what climate thing really is. Okay. You can see seasons have shifted eh? mm -hmm. from what used to be there originally to what we have today. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing I'm trying to explain. Okay. The changing of the weather conditions in a place mm -hmm. in a period of time. Okay. Yes. Great. So we, we, we trying like you're trying to get the simplest understanding of climate change. Yeah. That it, it's a it's a drift from mm -hmm. the normal yeah. uh, weather patterns over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, Isabel has added some some juice in the conversation <laughs> that, that that you cannot be able to talk about climate change. Yeah in itself like something normal yeah. you have to be able to dress it in a way that people see the problem in a problem of course yeah you, you need to yes less it with some problem um and, and that is very key because then everything every conversation about climate change is it, it poses danger whether it is to human life or ecosystems or any other thing that we can talk about mm. uh, and if you sat down and they thought about something nice you'll you'll find it very difficult to mm. pinpoint what this this nice thing that has been brought about by climate change so mm. everything else is is, is is gloom it's 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 bad it's mm. challenge yeah. and, and all that yeah. great so um <clears throat> we're doing well maybe at this point let me ask do you think that there is the correct understanding of climate change at the grass and the grassroots i want to be very specific where you live in your village in your neighborhood uh in your cities in your estates do you think that there is the correct understanding of climate change as we have put it or is there is some misconceptions or misinformation or probably something entirely different let me begin with you and at the grassroots, you mean my hometown or like... In forget the conferences, forget uh, the seminars, forget where people gather to discuss climate change. Uh, We're going back to the normal life where people are living, waking up, okay. going to the farm. Yeah. yeah, so at that level, yeah. do you think that there is an, an um, a really called understanding of what climate change is? So, first a description of where I live. I don't live in Africa, <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah, means, yeah, yeah. I mean, I live in the Netherlands. Yeah. Climate change is less present in people's lives, in daily lives, than here. Okay. Like, I'm not a farmer, I live in a city, I, study, I studied at a high university, uh, environmental uh, university, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so during my bachelor's, I was always in this bubble of environment environmental studies about mm -hmm. biodiversity i don't know like everything mm -hmm. really. so mm -hmm. climate change of course everyone knew we are very we were very strict with with uh, thinking about how you commute to your work mm -hmm. or to your parents house or live in another city uh, we had strict rules about turning the heater on in mm -hmm. the winter like only when it drops below a certain degree like uh, minus degree so mm. I come from a bubble that knows about climate change now living in an urban city or like in an urban country in a developed country people don't really care enough because if you cannot touch it if you cannot see it then why why think about it why care about it mm. I mean what I've learned here so far is that 
especially like it's it's the breadbasket of Kenya, so everyone is basically a farmer. Mm. Your your livelihood strategy is dependent on on weather situations or how like climate change is very integrated in the sub-Saharan region. Mm -hmm. So then to give another example, if I would talk with other friends who did not study at my university or mm. study something in law, just not really Mm. Or my brother, for example, who does something entirely different. It's it's a topic that people maybe people know it's out there. We talk about it, but if you do conscious action against it, um, you either are being considered as a far lefty, as we say it, mm. or just like ah, it's not here yet. So maybe maybe just there is no there is no hurry. There is no hurry. There is no or, need for any action. We yeah. are not in danger. Or in a sense, for example, to give like a general example, we have this thing. It's called um, fly a shame. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a concept. So people of my generation are very conscious now about flying, taking the airplane, mm -hmm. because it emits a lot. So if you would go on a holiday with your friends, and some people say like, I don't want to fly because I don't want to pollute. Then there is this clear divide still in the generation, in our generation of mm. why, why are you making such a big deal out of it? You know, mm. the airplane mm. is going to leave anyway. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Mm. So this is like a typical narrative if I would describe if people yeah. talk about climate mm. change or not. Yes, you have a big deal who's really conscious with it. We have mm. like a lot of eco communities out there. Mm. Um, also people who start a lot to invest in their own solar panels, water systems, mm -hmm. there's a lot mm -hmm. going on, especially in technology development. Okay. But there's still also people that, because it's not really tangible, mm. uh, it's not really it's not their business. Now. Yeah. As we say, climate change is not here yet, but mm. it is. <laughs> we are not just admitting yes. it. Okay, yeah. It's already here, whether we like it or not, yeah. whether we admit it or not. But so, I have to say, by the way, it mm. is already in our country for sure because mm. i remember when i came here and i said i'm from the netherlands ah uh, you're the one that stole uh water from or like land from the ocean or something yeah <laughs> it's mm. like yeah that's mm. true but the ocean is stealing it back now because <laughs> you know climate change yeah the raising of the water, the levels. water level so uh, okay. uh, we are everyone knows in our country we have a huge problem if the dams break like three fourths of our country we may be gone and people are making conscious decisions in uh, buying houses or building houses in lower grounds because if it happens then you will not have a house anymore so people are economically thinking ahead mm. but mm. they will think the government will fix it you ah, know okay. in that sense somebody's problem anyway. we'll be safe. okay <laughs> okay so let's come back to your village bro <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? Do Goody. people understand this thing or think, what do you think? I think good has been to my village. What do you think good? Sorry, <laughs> uh, you tell us about your village, man. You tell us. So, my village, okay. Let me just talk about <laughs> the local Kenyan life. Yes, yes. Anywhere, any yeah, village so in the country. For sure, some people might not understand the whole concept of climate change. Mm. Either due to ignorance or, or illiteracy or many other reasons. But for sure, people feel like there's a difference in things. Uh, being an agricultural place, of course, as I said earlier, mm. the season have shifted. So, some people just know that, ah, these things used not to be like this, but they're like this. Mm. But they don't go beyond to know why, uh, why is it like, like this. this. Okay. So, that's a bigger problem because mm. um, some people are not taking keen interest to know why. They just know things have changed, but I'm not going into details to find out mm. why I think it's mm. Mm. But uh, basically, in every, almost every village, uh, awareness is being created. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. People are beginning to understand uh, the things, the things are shifting mm. due to what we call climate change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, today we experience maybe not the same long term mm -hmm. uh, rains as we uh, experienced before. Then we can also find that uh, even when it rains, sometimes it rains so much. Mm. It rains a short time, but mm. the, a lot of the intensity Violence. is really heavy. Mm. 
and you see people say like, ah, this this rains, ah, uh, but not many rains. Mm. Yeah, they cause floods mm. and sometimes mm. you feel. And probably it's not the rain, the normal rain. Normal rains, rains, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, sometimes you find like you had rains in February, mm. and it was just serious rains mm. last month. Yeah. There were serious rains, yeah. and you see people began getting confused. Mm. Do we plan? Do we not plan? Yeah. And we also experienced in the past. You find mm. that uh, from October, mm -hmm. the rains don't stop. Mm. Yeah. So it the, yeah, the, it just continues. It goes through December. Mm. It's normally a dry month. Mm. It goes up to March and it continues mm. up to the next October. So. It's a bit confusing to farmers and to the local people. Mm -hmm. And for sure, they recognize that there's something that has changed, either innocently mm. or um, consciously. Okay. They know that the weather is not the same. Okay. Yes. So there is, there is, there is, there is uh, the understanding, the realization that things are changing. Yeah, that things are not the same. But they cannot be able to connect to the why things yes, are changing. Yes, yes, yes. Majority of the population yes. cannot be able to explain why things are changing. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Africana Yard Cottages and we are having uh, Walala David and uh, Isabel and we are having this uh, very great conversation on climate change. Obviously, it is a big conversation. Uh, but we just want to take a short break and we will be back in a short while to continue with this conversation. Don't go.